Um, a lot of people don't don't see my husband. We've been married for 20 years. Wow. Um, Jerry Sire is his name, and I am very blessed to have him as a husband. He's an incredible husband, and um, they don't see him a lot because he's not a fan of social media and having his picture all over social yes. media and all that. Yeah. So anyway, but he's there, very present in my life, and an incredible support and encouragement and all those incredible things. So we've been married 20 years, and we parent three boys together. So we have three sons, Jackson, wow. Jerry Jr., and Jude. Jude is our surprise boy. We still don't know exactly how Jude got here. <laughs> well, yes. well, we, well, I think we, you know, we're going to leave that for another conversation. Okay, okay, keep going. <laughs> So my oldest two, I just this morning was with them, taking them to their first day of school, and their junior and sophomore year is what they started. They both stand six foot two inch tall giants at, at 16 <laughs> and 15 years old, and then our 10 year old started fifth grade. So anyway, we're right in the throes of it, cooking and laundry. Okay, so, so now that people have a snapshot into your marriage, your family life, one of the things that blew me away, and you've intimate, you've intimated to this um, in our conversation, but it blew me away when you told me this last time I saw you, was that how you are able to, you know, have a New York Times bestselling author career, have a Bible teaching career that takes you all around the world, to star in movies, but to still get home, <laughs> cook dinner, take your kids to practice. Tell us, how do you do this? Like, and I don't want... I, now, I don't want no surface answers. I, I know, want I know. you to give some practical tips because there's some people that are watching right now that are overcomers in the making. You're an overcomer for sure, right? Because you, you know right. how to do it. But give them some tips before we get into the movie. Give them some tips on, on what you do, how you do it, uh, because I do find it amazing that you're able to do it all with such grace and, um, you know, oh, seemingly effortless. It. Well, it's not effortless. I appreciate that. But, you know, it's one of those things uh, you know how the Lord gives you something in your life that's going to make you have to seek him. It's going to make you mm -hmm. have to be on bended knee and continue to, to elevate your prayer life. This is one of those things for me and anybody that's juggling marriage or juggling being a parent. You're constantly like, Lord, help me to honor you in this season of my life, in this month, in this year. So it's one of the things that keeps Jerry and I constantly seeking. Because as soon as we, we find a balance... The kids grow up a year and they wow. switch sports and they switch activities or the dynamics in our marriage change. And we need to revisit it over and over again. So we haven't arrived by any means, but it's one of the things that keeps us before the Lord. And I'll tell you practically what we do. We made this decision a long time ago. Um, we literally set out our calendar. So for me, in terms of invitations that might come in for me to speak or, or um, writing projects that, that I might take on, or if a call comes for me to consider a film and I'm going to consider doing it, the very first thing we do is lay, literally lay out a paper calendar on our dining room table every single month of the wow. year. And we've decided that we're a priority, me and him, me and Jerry, and our children are priority. So as far as we can, we get the calendar from the kids' schools. Uh, we homeschooled for a lot of years so they could come with us on the road. So that was one of it, one of the things we did. But when they started going into school, we literally put down their football games. We put down their mm -hmm. basketball games. We put down this is going to be the day the prom is. Everything we can, we filter in. And of course, we can't get everything, but we're going to filter it in and we write that down. So then no matter wow. what invitation comes in, it's got to filter first through these priorities that we have already set on our calendar. Wow. Um, so That's what it so means, good. Devon, is that I say no a lot. I say no a lot. I think it's very, it, it, you know, it's interesting. We look at people's lives on Instagram and on Instagram, it might look like I'm everywhere. No, nope, I'm not. I'm at home in my kitchen. <laughs> no is a simultaneous yes to something else. Come on. Uh-oh, now we preach. Here we go. It is. Here we go. It, it just got started. You about to make me run around here. Yes, I love it. Yes, what you just said, Steve Jobs, um, you know, had a quote that I'm not going to try to uh, uh, say from memory because I'm going to butcher it. But the essence of the quote is that uh, no is a sign of focus. People yeah. were asking how was he able to do so much. It's because he used no a lot because no helps you focus on your yes. And when you That's say right. yes then you're able to give your energy, your all to executing that yes well. And I love what you said about prioritizing your priorities. That's right. Because clearly, and this is so good, because sometimes I think people think operating in purpose means almost you choose purpose over family. And if, if God is blessing you professionally, 
sometimes you can use that as an excuse not to be present personally. That's right. Um, but I love how you're teaching us that you can have it all, you can do it, but you still have to prioritize the personal first, even above the professional. That's exactly right. When I, when I see Jesus, he going to ask me several questions. One of them is, did, did I know? God is going to say, did you know my son? Did you know my son, Jesus? That's going to be the mm. first question. And then I'm going to have to give an account for the way I mm. honored my husband. I'm going to have to give an wow. account for whether or not these, I'm going to have to give an account for whether these actual real life human beings that the Lord entrusted to me as sons whether I honored that responsibility or whether I shoved yeah. it off on somebody else, I'm going to have to answer for that. And so not perfectly, but purposefully and intentionally, I want to be able to um, say that I lived with integrity within my own home, not just out there on platforms everywhere, but in my own yeah. home, did I do what the Lord was calling me to do? Oh my goodness. Wow. Wow. Listen, we could, we could go on this subject all yeah. day because I, I, I just love it. And it's so profound. And I love the teaching because so often when um, people see, you know, us who happen to be in the public eye to a degree, they, they only see the presentation, but they don't see the process behind the presentation. So I really wanted you, thank you for sharing some tips and tools that uh, have blessed me. I am now going to be getting together with Megan with the paper calendar, <laughs> laying it out. Because it was so funny, right before you and I started talking earlier today, I was telling her that I have to go to these, uh, I gotta go to Lakewood this week and uh, Travis Green's church after that. And she's like, I didn't know that. I'm like, well, I thought you knew. I, Priscilla, you just gave us the, the tool. So um, speaking about you know being obedient, um, I wanna talk about your new movie, Overcomer, which is in theaters all around the country and the world, I believe, this Friday. So excited about this movie and uh, so excited. I've seen it. You do an incredible job in the film. Okay. I believe you play uh, Principal Olivia Brooks, right? That's right. So, That's right. Um, so talk to me first. Um, when the Kendricks, Alex and Steven, if you all do, are not following the Kendrick brothers, you got to follow them. They are just, I mean, truly if you've seen their films, let me tell yeah. you, these brothers are even greater in person. Yes. Aren't they? Yes. I mean, so I want to talk so much about, you know, them and, and the process of making the film. So what was your experience when they called you and sent you the script for Overcomer? Uh, what did you feel? Tell everybody what the movie's about. And what did you feel when you read this script? And um, what was your impression once you put it down? Sure. Um, let me, I'm going to back up just a little bit with, to answer your question and say that the only reason why I ever even considered being in films was because of Alex and Steven. They called me one wow. day when they were writing War Room and they said, Priscilla, we are writing a character, a lead character for War Room. And every time we write her lines, we are thinking to ourselves, what would Priscilla Shire say? That's how we're writing it. <laughs> nice. So we want to know, will you do it? And I said, no, I ain't going to do that. No way. There are real live actresses in the world who can do this. Because, <laughs> you know, we've all seen a movie before that could have been good, but that mm -hmm. one actor was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so just so, that I, just so that we're clear, before War Room, you had never acted? No, I mean, I was, in, I was in high school drama, you know, at the church, the church drama ministry when you're growing up in youth group. <laughs> so the answer is no. You never yes, actually have no. acted. <laughs> The answer is no. I had never done it. And I said no originally, but then they said, Priscilla, pray about it because we think when you pray about it. By the way, that was going to be one of my no's. I was saying no because I was like, that's not what I, that's not what I do. I, I'm in ministry. I want to be clear on the purpose that God has for me. And they said, but Priscilla, read this script and pray about it because we think if you read it, you'll see it's not just a movie. It is ministry. And so when I read the script for War Room, I read what, of course, anybody who's seen War Room knows that it, it is ministry. Um, it, it's basically right in line with my purpose. Um, and that's, those are the scripts that I, you know, there have been quite a few that have, have crossed our desk uh, since War Room. And the ones that I know they just need an actress for, I know there are yeah. very, very skilled actors and actresses like your incredible wife. That uh -huh, can carry, man, that can carry these roles beautifully. Um, so for me, if a script passes my desk, and it is not overt in terms of ministry, the purpose of it being the gospel, the purpose of it being making sure that people are coming to a relationship with Jesus Christ, then it's nothing wrong with the script. It just means it's not for me because I know what my purpose is. So to answer right. your question, 
That's what Overcomer was. Um, Overcomer, when I read the script, I realized that it was going to be unapologetic and not sugarcoat and water down the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. um, we say its name. And it, listen, any film where yes, I you do. say its name <laughs> <laughs> um, is a yes, film Yes, you I'm do. You, yeah. there's, a, there's a powerful scene where you literally, I, I don't want to ruin it for them, but I think I can yeah. say it without ruining it, where you literally um you know walk through some someone one of the characters through what we would call the sinner's prayer yes. in essence you actually lead them to christ we see that on screen i i don't think that i've ever seen a movie that led someone to christ that way so wow um, well and i'll tell you devon that was there was this you know obviously that was in the script so i had you know memorized my lines for the script and we did it that way a couple of times but then alex looked out from behind the camera and he said now priscilla I don't want you to say what you've memorized. I want you to lead this girl to Christ the way Priscilla Shire would lead someone to Christ. So and that's so we, why it was so powerful. Yeah, we filmed it that way several more times and Alex ended up using that version in the film. And we prayed over it. We prayed over it. I mean, in that moment, we, we had devotions every single day on set. That's what Stephen and Alex do on their set. Um, but before that scene and other ones, in particular in the movie where Alex and Steven felt like this could be a scene where somebody in the theater or watching it at home later on DVD comes into relationship with Jesus Christ. Um, we stopped cast crew people out from under, behind the cameras, the makeup people. Everybody came and we grabbed hands and we asked that God would anoint that scene and make the words powerful enough that somebody sitting in the theater, they just came for popcorn and a soda and don't even know that they're about to meet, meet the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. Wow. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It's, it's, let me tell you, for those of you that are just tuning in to this incredible Instagram live with none other than Priscilla Shire, we are talking about her new movie overcomer in theaters this Friday. Uh, you can go see it. I believe as early as Thursday night, you can go ahead and pre-order your tickets, get them now. You've got to see it. We're talking about a very pivotal scene where the gospel of Jesus Christ is communicated through her character, uh, principal Olivia Brooks. You've got to see it. So tell us more about your character, who she is. And then I also want you to talk about your process for getting ready for a character uh, and what you do to, to make sure the character isn't you, even though you yeah. probably still use some of who you are to make that character work. Yes. Well, um, Olivia Brooks is the principal at the school where the main character attends. So Hannah is the main character. She's about 15 years old. She's the whole film is about identity. It is about addressing who and what we have allowed to define us and where we placed our significance. Because if it's attached to something that can be taken away from us, we will constantly be on an emotional roller coaster in our lives. Yep. Whether it's success or money or the applause or appreciation or acceptance by a particular group. If it's nothing wrong with any of those things, but if our significance is attached to those things, we're gonna be in so much trouble. Ooh. And so we've got a, we've got a Hannah that's got an identity crisis. We have John Harrison, who is a grown man. His significance has been tied to his job, and then his job is stripped away from him. Mm -hmm. And then there's another main character, and his health has been taken away. And as a result of that, he's used to being strong and, and, and uh, having a lot of, um, uh, you know, just ability, physically speaking, and now he doesn't have that. And so we see all these people with their own different identity crisis. And Olivia Brooks is a principal that interacts with them. And um, she takes every opportunity. She's kind of professional and polished. And you can tell she cares a lot about her job. But then she keeps taking an opportunity to sort of peel back the professional veneer and have intimate conversations with these people. So instead of just seeing a student that needs to make A's, she reads between the lines of what the students are saying and, and, and begins to dig into their heart and take an opportunity to encourage them and to mm -hmm. call out of them what they don't even see that they have because their circumstances are so haywire. So I loved, I loved Olivia Brooks for that because I think it's encouraging, particularly, you know, as a school administrator, I think about my own sons, Devon, and how I pray that God wow. puts teachers and principals and administrators and coaches and lunchroom ladies and people in their life that aren't just interested in them getting A's. I, I, mm. I'm not as interested Amen. in the A. I hope they get an A, but yeah. what I'm interested but it's in more is their than character that. being formed. Yes. So there have yes. to be adults in their life like Olivia Brooks that are willing to take off the professional veneer every once in a while mm -hmm. and see into their heart and say, young man, 
How can I help yeah. you? How can I help yeah. you to see who you really are? Mm. Wow, that's that is so uh, powerful and important. And the movie does a really good job of showcasing the complexity of those dynamics. Um, let me ask you this: and when you read this script and being a part of this movie, you know this idea of overcomer. How do you personally relate to that? Yeah, yeah. Well, you can't be an overcomer unless you've had some stuff to overcome. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know? And again, I think that's one of the negative sides, I guess, of social media is that all of us are posting our highlights. We're all posting our mm -hmm. highlights. And so people, what we tend to do is look at somebody we admire and we just assume that these highlights represent the entirety of their existence, you know? Isn't that crazy how people do that? Yeah, oh. we think it's everything. <laughs> so then we start jealously coveting their life when we ain't seen their full life. We just saw Come the on. highlights. <laughs> the, yes, the highlights, exactly. Manipulated highlights, that's right. <laughs> that's right, manipulated highlights, right? Filtered highlights. Um, so, you know, for me, it's the same. You know, we post the things that we, that we don't mind people seeing, and then we have stuff to overcome in our regular uh, lives. And I know for me, there have been lots of feelings of inadequacy all along the way. I mean, if left to myself, Devon, I would have never been in war room. If left to my own fears and insecurity, lack of experience, I'm constantly in a position. Everything that I can look back over the past 20 years of ministry that the Lord has allowed me the privilege to be entrusted with, I realize that if he, by his spirit, had not compelled me to push back past my fear and insecurity, I'd still be paralyzed and sitting around doing nothing mm. if left to myself, if left mm -hmm. to myself. Mm -hmm. um, I would I would have said I'm not capable. I'm not qualified. I'm not talented enough. I'm not skilled enough. She's better than me. She would be better than me. That That's my M.O. to kind of revert to that. Really? So, no, no one would know that. That's unbelievable. I'm even surprised to hear you say that. Seriously. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that the people that we admire, this is what I've discovered. The folks that I admire, what they're doing in their life, for most of them, or a lot of them, I should say, it's not that they were just so uh, ready for the task. It's that they were just one of the people who were willing to push past whatever their own insecurities were to do it. They had insecurities just like you, mm -hmm. but they were willing to push past those insecurities and do it anyway. We think those people we admire are fearless. No, they're not. They no, were they're just not. willing That's to true. push past the fear that you weren't. Yes, yes. And, and I think that what I love about the movie um, is that it really articulates the, all of the main characters, um, you know, not only just your character, uh, but the coach's character, uh, the young girl, her character, the grandmother, they all have to push through something yes. in order to overcome. Um, and I think that's what makes the, and also, uh, you know, um, and again, I'm not going to ruin it, but, you know, all of the main yeah, characters yeah. Um, all of them. have to overcome and, and push through in order to overcome which I do think is so, you know, profound. And what I love, I just want to go back and tie it into this, what we're talking about right now. I love this idea that Alex and Steven, who are the Kendrick brothers, for those of you who don't know, call you and say, we're writing a script and you're going to be in it. And you're like, <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> oh, oh, man. But, but it, and so what I, the point I want to get at is that I believe that one of the things that most of us have to overcome the most is ourself. Yes. And our Every limited time. understanding of who we are. Let me ask you this. And I want you to talk just as you're talking about this, really think of a person that's watching right now that only has a limited view of themselves and they need to overcome that. Yep. How, how has your life become fuller and how have you seen more of what God had for you since accepting the role in overcomer and then I can only imagine and now overcomer once you said okay I'm not going to put any restrictions how have you seen God expand your life okay I love oh oh I love that question so much <laughs> that's such a good question the couple things that I want to say in response to that question first of all when I look back and and about film 
me being in, in films in general, but, but beyond that, writing books, um, speaking and teaching, preaching, all of that. When I look back on it, at every step in the road, there was a person that the Lord put in my life to call out of me something that I did not know was there. Yes. I, I mean, I literally can point to actual people that yeah. put me in a position I did not think I was qualified for. And they looked at me and said, you have something to say. You have something to write. You can be on film and carry this film. And I was like, really? I can? But every Joshua needs a Moses to put Come him on, in the man. line of fire and say, you are capable of winning this battle. I'm going to support you. But, but you have it in you to do it. I literally can look back and see that there were people. So the first thing I'm going to say is, what I really want to say is you, you've got to be planted in the house of God. You have to be planted in the house of God. Damn. Because you get community around you where the yeah. Lord gives discernment and eyes to see from the, 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 the mentors, the father figures, the spiritual mothers that are in the house of God. And they look at you and go, baby, do you know what you can do? I've seen it. I see it in you. You need people that can see some stuff on you. And then when I think about, gosh, the privilege, it's such a gift. It almost brings tears to my eyes. Such a privilege that the Lord would let me be a part of these films, particularly during this day and age, Devon, when faith-based films are actually being taken seriously. I mean, a decade ago, 15 years ago, we wouldn't want to see no faith-based film. We sure we weren't going to take <laughs> right. our friends to see a faith-based film because they didn't have the quality. Maybe the storytelling was a little bit corny or cheesy, but that's not the case anymore. There are people like you and like the Kendrick brothers and the Irwin brothers who are making films that, that are quality and have great story. And the Lord is letting me, he's giving me the gift to be a part of it. War Room would have gone on with or without me. I'm the one that would have missed out on the gift wow. of being a part of, of the blessing that Ooh. War Room was in people's lives. God, God's will is going to be accomplished with or without you. He don't need me. But we'll miss out on the privilege of being a part of it. So this is what Alex said to me when I was considering whether or not to, to take War Room, because he was very clear about the cost. And I do think people need to know that. For every calling, whatever that calling is, no matter how small or large the sphere, there is a cost. And Alex was outlining for me what the cost would be. One of those would be a little bit of a loss of privacy, which was a big deal for my husband. Um, so we had to weigh that. But he did say this to us, and this was the kicker that sort of um, kind of pushed us over the edge to go ahead and do War Room. And then eventually, I can only imagine and now overcomer. He said, Priscilla, do you realize that if you speak to an audience every weekend for your entire life, if you speak to 1,000 people Faith. every weekend yep. for your entire life, yep. you will not reach as many people as War Room will reach. So That's to right. date, 200 million people have seen War Room. Woo! I will never reach that many people <laughs> in person and probably not through my books and Bible studies either. And so it feels like a privilege that God has expanded my territory by partner, partnering me up with people. And that's what he does in the kingdom. He links us up with other people that have different gifts and different talents and different spheres of influence. If we'll just stop fighting with each other and just link up with each other and yes. stop comparing and competing and link up with each other. There is no telling how much damage we can do against the kingdom of darkness. Yes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And, and as you have, um, you know, lost some privacy, uh, has it been worth the cost, the influence that you're able to have and the impact? Because the thing about it is when people see you in a movie, you don't even, it's one thing when you're speaking and like you said, I mean, like Alex said to you, but it's another thing when people have seen you in a film and then they stop you in the airport, or they stop you while you're eating, like talk about the impact of the influence that that has given you uh, and how you've adjusted to that. Yes. Well, it, it, you know, I had a little bit of, um, of that that happened before the film just because of the books or the Bible studies, mostly the video driven Bible studies that we were mm -hmm. doing. There are several million women that have been through those. And so I would be stopped mostly by women. So the hard part, mostly for Jerry, was that now there were men stopping. <laughs> and he was like, wait a minute. He's like, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. Welcome to my world, Jerry. Welcome to my world. <laughs> 
<laughs> he was like, wait a minute, don't trip. Don't Hold trip. up now. Okay. Hold up. <laughs> So I think that was that was one of the hardest things was just to sort of navigate this new dynamic. Um, and then, of course, the number of people that were uh, stopping me. But here's the thing. Most of the time, the folks that stop to say something to me are not stopping like because they're fans. It, it, it might be that. But really, it's because they want to tell me how their marriage was rescued because of War Room. I'm telling you. People have stopped me to tell me how they had not considered prayer in regards to some devastating life circumstance that they were facing and a critical decision they were about to make. But they, they chose to pray instead of jumping off that bridge of, in whatever wow. area of their life. They chose to pray and how yeah. it changed their life. So, yeah, it's cost us a little privacy. Has it been worth it? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, Devon, last, no last November, I was in Israel. Um, with my family, we were doing, my, my mom and dad were doing a, a tour in Israel. And so there were um, a lot of people there, but we were together in the Garden of Gethsemane. My dad, my mom, several of my siblings, my husband, we were in the Garden of Gethsemane. And about 40 women from India. So, you know, you've been in Israel. There are people from all yeah. over the world that are coming yep. to Israel, you know, because they want to see and be in the land of the Bible. So there are 40 women that are on another tour that happen to be in the Garden of Gethsemane at the same time. They're all Indian women. So from halfway around the world in Israel, they all come over to me and they just start touching my face and their eyes. They're, I mean, weeping, weeping. They weren't weeping because they were fans. They were weeping. And, and one of the women came up to me, pushed through the, the crowd of women and said to me, you have no idea how you've changed our lives. Wow. She said, we just Great take job. war room and we take fervent and we pass it around to the women in the village and our marriages have been saved because you've done what God has asked you to do. Mm. There it is. It, it. It, it's worth the cost. It's worth the cost. And, and that's one of the, I mean, this is, listen, I, I'm not going to even tell you, uh, I'm not a fortune teller, okay? I don't know exactly uh, how the future is going to play out. But here's what I know, that the the foundation of the impact that the movies that the Kendricks have been doing and, and now that you have been a part of the mo their most recent films, I believe Overcomer, uh, whether it touches, you know, opens to a million dollars or a hundred million dollars, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, lives are going to be yes. touched by this movie. Yes, because, let it be. You know, so much of what we're talking about, why I like to get the story behind the stories, for some people listening, it's so important if you're watching this to not just take from this conversation the motivation to go see a film. Not that. A lot of films are going to be open. Why yep. you need to go see Overcomer is because it's personally going to change your yeah. life. To come into a greater relationship of who God is who Jesus is and what a relationship with them can do. And it also will show because what you did, what you talked about that you needed or what others need, like to have someone in their life that can see into them before they can see what's going to happen. Yeah. The same way that Kendrick did that with you. What I love is that your character, you know, principal Olivia does that with Hannah. Yeah, you it's true. That exact same thing. And it's so powerful in the movie. You're, you're telling her who she is and you're speaking life into her as is the coach. And it's so powerful because how often do we go through life and nobody ever tells us who we really are? Yeah, or or they've been telling us the opposite. Our they've been life. telling us the opposite. That's right. Yes, yes. Oh, my goodness. And that's why I think this movie is so powerful. If you all are just tuning in, um, you've got to go see Priscilla's new movie, Overcomer. It opens in theaters this Friday. Let's send Hollywood another message that – these movies of faith aren't going anywhere. Let's get behind it, all right? Uh, you can go right now to OvercomerMovie.com. You can buy your tickets right now. Ticket. The movie's going to be all around the country and the world. And if you like War Room, I can only imagine, even though the Kendricks didn't do that, Priscilla was in that film, too. Uh, breakthrough, and, breakthrough. Breakthrough, yeah, you know, we're doing our thing. Um, but it's so important. If these if these films are spoken to you, you've got to go take your family yeah. to go see Overcomer um, this weekend. It's it's uh, being distributed uh, and released by Sony Pictures and Affirm. We got to give it up for Rich Peluso and Tana Evans and Steve Bursch. It's amazing to me that God has planted 
people yeah. in Hollywood at the studio level that oh. are committed to bringing these films to the Amazing. world. Amazing. Absolutely, absolutely. One thing that I, I want to bring up from the film, and I know we got a few other things we talked about before Instagram. Instagram cuts us off in an hour, so oh, that's monitoring the yeah, yes, it does. Uh, so I'm monitoring the time. And I have a question for you too. Okay, cool. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, so we'll make sure we, we're efficient and we get to it. So, so here's the thing that, uh, and I don't want to ruin a, a part of the storyline, um, but in the storyline, there's a secret. The secret about Hannah. Okay. And there's a judgment made about how to deal with that secret. Yep. That then, you know, the people that make the judgment are kind of held to task. They wait a minute. How did, why did you do such and such? How do you handle sensitive subjects when you really want to do what's right for the person, but by doing what's right for one person, you may hurt someone else? How do you navigate yes. that? Yeah, it's... <laughs> It's so interesting that you brought that up because I got to tell you, my friends and I, they're, they're friends of mine that came to the premiere and I have white friends and I have black friends. Okay, now you're saying what I really wanted to say. Now we having a real conversation because I said, wait a minute. <laughs> when I saw that in the movie, I said, uh-uh. <laughs> I, I, I wish you would. I wish you would. <laughs> you better get up out of our business. <laughs> So my white friends reacted one way, but my black friends reacted a whole nother way to the secret. Now they were like, oh, yeah. no, they didn't. No, no they, they didn't. Did. That's exactly how I reacted. I said, uh-uh. I said, when I see Alice and Steve, we're going to sit down and talk. Let me tell you how it goes in a black family, y'all. Yeah, oh, yeah. So those of you, when you see the movie, you'll know exactly what we're talking about. Um, when you see the, see the movie, you'll know what the secret is. So I don't even remember what your question was. Here's my you question. Say, my question is, okay. when, when, you, when, you, when you're in a situation where you want to help someone, but by helping them, you know inadvertently it may hurt someone else, how do you handle Ooh. that? That's one of those things that is hard to have a blanket answer for sure. the, it entirely because it really does depend on, on the, the situation. Unique, it does. It depends on the unique situation. It depends on the person that it's going to hurt, the state that that person is in, the, the hurt that it's going to cause, the ripple effect as far as you can see, of effect that it's going to have on that person. Um, and I would say this is, again, when a wise counselor comes into play. You've got to have somebody in your life that's lived a little bit longer than you that yep. you can bounce this off of and say, what would you suggest that I do? And then, okay, and, th and then, of course, not to just be trite or overly spiritual, but really praying about it and see where the Lord gives you peace. Because sometimes you will have peace about something that isn't necessarily rational. In other words, your mind doesn't feel like this might be the right thing, but there's something that's just settled on the inside mm. of you that this is the right direction to go. And then you leave the fallout to the Lord. But it, but it depends. It really does. I, I will say it depends on each situation. And then it's incredibly helpful to have some wisdom in your life from some yeah. older, wiser people who can help you walk through it. Yeah. Amen. That's good. That's good. Wisdom, counsel, prayer, and peace. Very important yeah. because so many people, um, you know, are dealing with these difficult things that, uh, you know, by helping someone, it could hurt someone else. And these issues are very, very sensitive. And I do, I, I was grateful that the movie, at least, it, you know, for those characters that did the thing we're talking about, y'all got to go see Overcomer. Trust me, because you're going to see. If, you, if you're from a black family, you're going to see. <laughs> What happens in the movie? You got to go see it. But I'm glad at least it was dealt with and that there was, uh, you know, there was some uh, resolution to it. Again, if you're tuning in right now, you got to go see Overcomer Priscilla's new film comes out this Friday. Go to Overcomer Movie right now. Watch the trailer. Buy your tickets. You've got to see it. Let's shock Hollywood again by letting them know these movies of faith, our movies of faith are not going anywhere and we want more of them. So Priscilla, one of the big things in the movie, I want to ask this and then I want to pivot and you get a chance to ask your question because there's a few more things I want to do before they cut us off in about 15 minutes. Um, discipleship. Discipleship. Mm -hmm. Huge part of overcoming. Huge part yeah. of overcoming. And you are truly, I believe, one of the greatest teachers, especially of the Bible in this generation. You don't have to agree with me. I, I believe that. Thank you. How, what is your, <laughs> how, what is just your, you know, brief approach to how to break down complex subject matter 
in a way that you can teach it so that you can build discipleship? What is the key to building disciples? Um, the key is to, it, uh, there's two, two factors of that, two layers of that to me. One of them is, you know, um, helping the people that you're in contact with to digest the word of God. So breaking it down for them in a way that they can see themselves in the scriptures. Obviously, first of all, see who Jesus is in the scriptures, but then see how it applies to them. Because I think sometimes living the Christian life seems like such a big thing, an unreachable task. Understanding the word of God seems like such an unreachable task. So if you have the capacity to help someone take a scripture verse and just break it down into a bite-sized piece that they can internalize as a wife, as a mom, as a husband, as a father, living their regular everyday life and how it matters to them to have a relationship with Jesus that's conversational and easygoing and that he's a friend. If you can help that person to understand their faith, in that sort of a language and in that on that sort of a level, that's where discipleship begins. The other level of discipleship, discipleship is opening your life up to someone where it's not about we're sitting down reading the scriptures together. It's just you're coming alongside of me and I'm coming alongside of you. Paul said, as, as I serve Christ, as you see me imitate Christ, so you be imitators of me. So when you mm. open your life up to somebody and they just see you loving your husband, loving your kids, um, being kind to people, um, serving in the, in the house of God on Sunday, when they see that, your imitation of a life of Christ, intimacy with Christ, it spurs and inspires something in the person that you're discipling. Come on now. Come on now. It's almost like you got to live it in order to teach it. You better be living it. <laughs> you better but, be living it. But you and I know so many that teach do, do not. Yeah, yeah. We that know breaks this. my heart. That breaks it's my the heart. truth. It's the truth. Yeah. It's the truth. It's the absolute truth. Oh, my goodness. It's like there's so many things I want to ask you. One of the things I think was really powerful about the film is um, there's a theme of fatherhood running through the movie. And uh, it's very powerful. I lost my father uh, when I was nine years old. He died of a heart attack when he was 36. And, uh, you know, so it's been challenging to, you know, navigate life without a father. Mm -hmm. um, you have had an incredible father. And have yeah. an incredible father. Yeah. Uh, you know, Bishop Tony Evans is just a dynamic man. Uh, how has his father, you know, how has the fatherhood of a man like that um, impacted, you know, your decisions day to day, even now? You know, I yeah. mean, you know, when you, because when it's one thing to have a great father, it's another thing to have a father who's so prominent in the world of faith. You know, how did that inspire you, motivate you to do what you're doing now? Yeah, such a great question. And I always love when people ask me about my dad. And the reason why I can say I love it is because I know many pastors' kids who don't want to be asked about their dad because he was a different man at home than he was at church. And that's not my testimony. My dad wow. and mom have integrity. They were not perfect, but they for real love Jesus. They, yes. they, were, they were not pretending. They weren't at church saying one thing and then coming home and doing a whole different thing. Dad yeah. led us in devotions around the table after dinner. He was for real. He wanted his kids to know Jesus and he prayed over us. And um, again, we, it wasn't perfect, but he was purposeful and intentional. And I have to tell you, if there's one thing that I've gathered from my mother and my father, it is consistency and it is integrity. Those are the two things that hashtag, I don't have to be need perfect. To hashtag that. Consistency that's, and integrity. That's right. Integrity meaning I'm the same through and through. I'm the same in the dark as I am in the light. I'm the same when I'm by myself as when I'm in front of a crowd. I'm not going to put on a show for anybody so that it doesn't matter where you catch me, at the grocery store, at the mall, just running out to my mailbox real quick, uh, at a movie theater by myself. It doesn't matter where you catch me. The same Priscilla Shire you saw do something out in public. That's the same girl you're going to meet when, when I'm somewhere mm -hmm. by myself. So Amen. integrity, but also consistency, that my parents did the same thing for 40 years. They've been married 48 years now. So they've made decisions about what kind of way they wanted to raise their family. And then, again, it wasn't perfect, but they just kept doing it over and over and over and over again. So I know now, as a mother of boys, uh, of children, how... <laughs> much hard work it is to stick to it when you're cooking dinner, but don't nobody want to eat what you made. You're trying to have devotions, but don't nobody want to sit still. Everybody's rolling their eyes because they want to go play video games. It takes the Holy Spirit to keep you going when it doesn't seem like it's being appreciated. 
So now as a grown woman, I'm so grateful to my parents for being consistent and having integrity. Wow. Oh my goodness, that's so powerful. And it's so true. Those two things yeah. make all the difference in the world. You got to be consistent and you have to have integrity. Um, uh, I, I want to come back to Overcomer in a minute. Overcomer, if you all are just tuning in, Overcomer uh, is the new movie for Silla's in. You got to see it. Comes out in theaters this Friday, August 23rd. This Friday. You can buy your tickets right now, overcomermovie.com. Uh, so here's what's interesting. Um, just about two weeks ago, uh, Chance the Rapper released his new album, and I was going through his, his uh, Twitter feed, and I found a, a small clip of a video he posted not that long ago. And on his nightstand was not only the Bible, but it was a copy of Fervent. Did you know that? I'm sorry, did you say Chance the Rapper? Chance the Rapper, the one of the, the biggest names in Hollywood, in, in, not only Hollywood, in hip-hop, known all around the world, when he showed his nightstand right next to his bed, and he wasn't showing it to show off, he just was like, the camera was panning. There was a copy of Fervent. Wow. Do you understand the impact that your writing is having? <laughs> when, you know, your book is literally inspiring the, the next generation that, ha that has the Lord. megaphone to inspire the next generation. Wow. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I mean, it's amazing, isn't it? You never know how the Lord is using any of us. If we just yeah. would like do what he's asked us to do. We, I, you know, I was thinking when you said that about um, there's a, a man that is in ministry. He has a huge ministry that reaches lots of people, but his father was a minister. This is just bear with me. His father was a minister, but he saw that his son was going astray and sort of gave up his ministry that he was building to raise his boy. And it was a huge sacrifice, but he raised his boy. And years later, his son had a ministry that affected millions upon millions Ooh, of people come on, and Jesus. changed people's lives because this dad was like, you know what? I'm just going to do what I believe is what I need to do, which is give up building something over here so I can pour into my kid. And mm. as a result of that, the ripple effect of his decision to honor God went further than anything he could have built himself anyway. Yeah. And so I think about that, that if we'll just honor what God has asked us to do, there is no small sphere. Every sphere ripple effects into other spheres that you can't even see and imagine. Oh, it's it's amazing. It's truly amazing. When I saw that, I said, that's incredible. That's incredible. Uh, and, and for those of you that you know have fervent, you've got to get the new book. I, it's Radiant, right? The new book is Radiant. Yes, Radiant. When does it come out? It, I think it's out now. I is think it out it's right now? Out. Yes, oh, and, okay. and a Bible study called Defined. So both of those are companions to the film, and we're hoping that it'll help people to remember who they are in Christ. Okay, so Radiant and Defined are companions to overcome. Yes. Got it. Okay, great. So so if you all right now, if you need, um, you know, a new devotional, if you need um, a new perspective, if you just need more word in your life, go and get right now Radiant and Defined. They will not only help you uh, have a better experience when you see the film, they will also help you right now. Um, and I love how the Kendricks are so supportive of creating these tools that yes. help the movies go beyond just an entertainment experience and become uh, a ministry experience. You know, radiant and defined. You can get it right now. Um, okay, so what's your question for me before, before I get to the wrap-up? Yes, my question <laughs> for you is, one of the things that I respect greatly about you is that you are extraordinarily conspicuous with your faith. And there's nothing wrong with Christians that work in different industries, but aren't that overt with their faith. They just are, they're a light in the sphere that they're in without being um, verbal and audible about mm -hmm. their faith in the way you've chosen to be. So sure. I want to know, why did you decide to not just be in Hollywood and be a Christian in Hollywood, but why did you decide to be a very verbal pastor, preacher, speaker, teacher, where your faith is on full display while you're also <laughs> working in Hollywood. What compelled you to make that decision? Okay, see, so here's what's interesting about that. Great question. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, here's what's interesting. Just about three weeks ago, um, I shot a digital commercial, um, and I'll announce more about that later. But it was, it was kind of, you know, my life and inspiration and so on and so forth. And I had to come up with some old videos. Um, and so I was at home and I found these old VHS tapes. I gave them to the producers that were producing the commercial. 
And they gave them to me. They they tramp, They put them on a, a digital. They, so they took it from VHS to a digital copy. They put them on a UBS. Okay. And so I plugged it into my computer and I started watching it. And there were these tapes of me preaching when I was like 22 years old, okay. uh, 23 years old. And I sat there and I was like, wow. Because so often we're in it. We're so in life day to day. We don't have the perspective to look back. And when I saw those tapes at 22 and 23, the same person now, me, that, that will preach at Lakewood or do those things was the same person that was there preaching in East Oakland uh, on the corner of 70th and MacArthur, <laughs> barely 50 go. people in the congregation, the same yeah. fire, the same passion, the same everything. So the answer to your question, it, I just followed my passion. You know, you I, 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 have, I was that kid growing up that I was, I was just, I loved the church. I was passionate about it. I loved everything about it. I used to direct the youth choir uh, when I was, you know, what? 12 years old. Yes, I sure did. Yes, I did. Yep, yep, I sure did. I mean, I would get to church. I, I would help the deacons open up the church. I would vacuum the church. I would help them close the church. Oh. I was an elder in training. I was an usher. I did it all. And so, you know, the, the very quick, simple answer to your question is just, it's my passion. There we my go. My passion. And yeah. I just I just didn't feel uh, it was never calculated. So like when I first got the internship working for Will Smith in that internship interview, they asked me what else they needed to know about me. And I told them I observed the Sabbath. Why? Because I was passionate about my faith. Yeah. That's and I was crazy. like, I didn't even I wasn't like, yo, I'm not going to I'm just going to like this is my passion. Hey, this is what I believe. I'm interested in being entertainment. I don't know what you're going to say, but I'm not worried about it. And I think right. that is for me personally, when you are, you know, conspicuous with your faith i think you have to get to a place where you just don't care and i think part of the power of the film is overcoming other people's opinions about you you got and that right and when you when we do that when we overcome other people's opinions and we don't worry about it then we can run in the lane we were designed to run in the same way Ann does that's great that's you know great. she runs in her lane she got she got asthma people don't believe in her she's the only person on the team but yeah. guess what she's still gonna run her race how about we can learn a lot from just yeah. running our race with the passion that we have, the focus that we need to have, and not worry about people. Because I b fundamentally believe this, that if God, if we believe in God, we believe he is all-powerful, and that faith is truly the only way that we can access who he is and become acceptable to him. If we trust in his plan, how is it possible that his plan would require us to compromise our belief in him in order to achieve it. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It just logically didn't make sense to me. So I'm like, it doesn't mean that every every meeting I go in, I'm preaching or proselytizing. I don't do that, you know, no. but I just, I'm not going to hide who I am. So that's that was honestly, passion is really the answer um, of, of what led me here. Um, so thank you for that question. Uh, for those of you that just tuned in, our time is almost up. Priscilla is starring in a new film that's going to blow you away. It's going to inspire you. It's going to bring your family together. It's called Overcomer. It comes out this Friday, August 23rd. You can buy your tickets right now. Overcomermovie.com. You can buy the tickets. You can watch the trailer. If you have seen War Room, uh, if you have seen um, Courageous, or if you have not seen those films, You've got to go see Overcomer. If your faith is low, uh, you need to see it. Um, can you just give, Priscilla, there's somebody out there struggling right now. Can you give them a word to overcome whatever they're going through right now? Absolutely. The very first thing I would say is that you are created in the image of God, which means every aspect of your physicality and every aspect of your personality is an expression of the creative genius of God. He intended for you to look like that. He intended for you to have your strengths. He intended for you to have your weaknesses because those weaknesses are not liabilities. They are platforms for the strength of God to be displayed through your life. He wired you the way you're wired on purpose. The experiences you have, the expressions that are, that are uniquely yours, all of that God is going to use for his glory. All you got to do is just surrender all of it to him. Surrender yourself to him fully and completely, and he'll use you in a way that will completely blow your mind. You are not a mistake. 
You are not a li liability. You are not your behavior. You are not your past. You are not what you've done. You are not what has been done to you. All of that may be true and it may be valid and it may take a while for you to work through some of the hurt that you've experienced, but that is not who you are. You are who God says you are, point blank, period. And by God's spirit, you have the privilege, and I have the privilege, I love this, to not operate based on and rooted from the lies that we believe, the fear, the insecurity. Don't make decisions from that place anymore. Don't let yourself make decisions from that place anymore. You operate like the chosen, beloved, forgiven, adopted, a daughter or son of the most high God that you are. And when you do, you'll start walking in the victory that is rightfully yours in Jesus name. Ooh, yes. Praise the Lord. You are an overcomer. Praise yeah, you God. Are. Oh, wow. Thank you for that. There's so many comments on here. People saying they're crying. They're in tears. They're saying, amen. Hallelujah. They're putting the fire symbol. Thank you for that word so so powerful and we need it we're going through so many challenges we need to be reminded that we are overcomers and that uh we are conquerors through uh J jesus christ our lord and savior so um overcomer comes out in theaters you know there's one thing that uh was in my spirit that i wanted to do to see if you're okay with this um your mother is miss lois right your mother yes miss lois yes. is she still she still is having some health challenges she is. She is. And can, she's can, feeling pretty good, but she still does. Okay. Okay. Can, let's, can we pray for her for, for a moment? Devon, that'd be awesome. We need a straight up miracle. Okay. All right. Let's just pray for, for Miss Lois right now. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, dear Lord, for Miss Lois. We thank you, dear God, for her life. We're asking you, dear Lord. Uh, we are overcomers. Miss Lois is an overcomer. We are praying, dear God, that she will overcome uh, the challenges medically that she is facing, dear God. Through your stripes, she is healed. We are praying, dear God, for her healing. We are praying for the doctors that are tending to her care. We're praying for the nurses that are tending to her care. I pray, dear Lord, that every time she goes to uh, an appointment at the doctor, dear Lord, there would just be joy in her spirit. Yes, yeah. And there would be overcome. There was like literally in, it, when she would want to feel down, dear Lord, the overcomer spirit energizes her, strengthens her, Please and reminds me. her of who she is and what you, you're going to do through her. We're praying for her healing. We're praying, dear God, that she will just continue to get better and better and better. We're praying that she'll be surrounded with love and support. And anyone else right now going through a health challenge, we pray deliverance, we pray healing, and we pray, dear Lord, that they too would overcome whatever health challenge they are facing. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, we could talk all night. This is I know. great. Thank oh, you. Of course. No, thank you. Uh, again, Priscilla is starring in the new film, Overcomer. You've got to see this film. Take your family, take your church group, take your community group. This movie is going to bring you together. I guarantee it. It comes out this Friday in theaters, August 23rd, released by Sony uh, and Affirm Pictures that are committed to bringing movies like this to the world. Priscilla, thank you for being my sister. Thank you for being our sister. Thank you for being our teacher. And thank you for being the star that you are. Keep shining. We need you. Appreciate you, Devon. Appreciate you too. God bless.